is this kid? He didn't think he could cut it. I figured it was just the usual jitters. I take him under my wing. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is the news for this week, which is, uh, today is actually February 8th, Saturday, 2020. And uh, I wanted to start off the week by saying that uh, Midway is out there on digital download on various uh, services. And uh, I'm going to check it out later on today. I've seen a lot of people shitting on this movie because of the CGI stuff and whatnot. And this isn't accurate, that isn't accurate. Come on, man. We don't get a lot of movies that cover the things that we're passionate about, you know? When something like this comes out, how about just shut the hell up and enjoy it, you know? Or try to. Uh, I'm looking forward to watching this later on today. And I just wanted to mention that, hey man, this is out there. It's going to be hitting Blu-ray, I believe, late next week. But um, it is out there on digital. And uh, I thought it was worth mentioning. And this uh, video is pretty He's damn to cool. Be scared. Pearl Harbor is the greatest. In I mean, that looks awesome. Can't deny it. You know? I'm really looking forward to some kind of Pacific stuff in DCS, man. That would be just so cool. So anyways, guys, Midway is out there on digital, on various services. Check it out. So I think the biggest news of this week has been that Eagle Dynamics released a video called DCS World 2020 and Beyond. It's fantastic. Absolutely stunning. And the cinematic stuff they pull off in this is pretty amazing. Um, I just happened to run into a group of guys on Discord uh, from one of the... I don't remember where I ran into them at. But uh, they offered to help me out with my videos to uh, learn some of the ins and outs of cinematic uh, DCS recording. So I'm hoping to improve in some areas with uh, what I'm doing in my videos as well. Although my aim isn't to put together movies. I, I try to educate people. I think my aim is I want to educate people. Hey, this is what you can do with this module. Hey, look at this. You can do this. Hey, look at this location. You can fly here and check this out. I'm more of an informational kind of guy. Not tutorial. Uh, because I'm no expert on everything in DCS world. I'm just kind of the uh, looking glass into the world, if you will, for the average viewer. At least that is the aim I try to have. And uh, I try to help promote the hobby and whatnot. But uh, the stuff that this these guys have done in this video is just fantastic. Whoever makes the videos for the guys at Eagle Dynamics is pretty goddamn good. I'm not going to play the whole thing because it's just too awesome and you should really watch it yourself and not through my video, you know. But uh, I'll, I'll include a link to this in the uh, show notes as well and you definitely have to look at this. It's just fantastic. Very cool stuff. And it details a lot of the stuff that they're working on in 2020. In other flight sim related news... Uh, I wanted to mention this. So over at the App Store for the iPhone and iPad, uh, I happened to find that uh, the guys at GraphSim Entertainment, which used to be Graphic Simulations, uh, is my guess, uh, they used to have, in the 90s, a Hornet sim called F-18 Korea, as I recall. And um, it, it was pretty damn cool. It was one of the most realistic Hornet Sims you can get. It had graphics that rivaled, like, you know, at the time, SU-27 Flanker 
had a uh, very, very similar look and feel, only it was a Hornet. And uh, it was definitely one of the most uh, realistic and uh, high fidelity for that time that you could get your hands on. Um, looks like they've taken that and they've ported it over to an iPhone and iPad. Uh, for 10 bucks, you can give it a shot yourself. Uh, I was scrolling through here and it said something about it's got carrier ops, interactive flight school, uh, cooperative wingman, and it supports game controllers. Not sure what game controllers are supported on an iPad or an iPhone, but uh, again, that old code for 90s Sims should run pretty good on an iPhone or iPad considering the fact that the iPhones and iPads we have today probably has more processing power than a high-end 90s gaming rig. So definitely something I wanted to mention and I thought was interesting. In other DCS news, uh, the guys behind the JF-17 Thunder uh, have issued a, a mini update statement over on the Eagle Dynamics boards. Basically it looks like they're going to be working on air-to-air -air refueling. Uh, they said, besides bug fixing, AAR will be our current top priority. Uh, in the following months we will temporarily on hold the update of the external cockpit model but focus the, on model modification for the upcoming AAR feature. In parallel, our programs programmers will start the AAR coding. Pretty cool stuff, and they toss in an image there to show you what it looks like. Also this week, WAGS was uh, tossing some information out there on the F-16. This is kind of the, the, the Viper mini update, if you will. Uh, probably the most wanted feature of the Viper is the radar-directed gun sight. After all, there's not much more fun than BFM and a Viper. Uh, today we completed the first pass of the system and it's working quite well. However, it does need extensive testing before we can roll it into an open beta. Uh, for the Viper version we are simulating, it uses the EEGS Level 5 gun sight, not the old Locos, that combines the funnel with a radar-directed pipper for accuracy even at max range. Very cool. Uh, it also includes the Attitude Awareness Arc, the Ghost Horizon Line, uh, Bullet at Target Range Q, Multiple Reference Gun Sights, T-Symbol, the aspect angle on the EEGS TD arc and more. Uh, they also go on to toss in a link to a video of a real world video basically detailing the model of the gun sight that they are implementing and uh, it's pretty cool video of an actual F-16 versus a Eurofighter. Uh, pretty interesting. Uh, the Eurofighter is pretty badass so for an F-16 to get that close to one and get in and you know get some shots off one is pretty impressive if you ask me. In DCS slash RASBAM related news, Baltic Dragon, the guy responsible for manual updates, a lot of cool multiplayer missions, uh, a lot of the training missions for the RASBAM stuff, uh, over on his Facebook page had announced on the 5th that, that since there's no patch today I'm happy to share some of the files for the Mirage 2000 which you can manually download and then replace within your DCS folders. Uh, basically it includes an updated M2000 manual version 1.10 uh, an updated Coup d'etat campaign fixes to all three missions. The Coup d'etat campaign in multiplayer version, all three missions. Updated training M1 for both Caucus and NTTR. Very cool stuff. I will definitely be sure to toss a link to this as well in the show notes. And uh, on a side note, the Mirage 2000 is pretty awesome. And it's slowly becoming probably one of my top five favorites in DCS. It's very agile. It, it serves a very cool purpose in air-to-air, -air, but it's also a lot of fun in the air-to-ground role as well. In other related news... Thrustmasters, 
HOTAS Warthog kit that comes with the Warthog stick and the Warthog throttle is on sale on Amazon right now for $387. That's an incredible value. Um, the throttle alone costs like 300 bucks. The stick is about 250. So, man, I don't have the Hotas Warthog throttle. I have a TWCS, which I really like. I would like the buttons and dials and extras that are on that to utilize in DCS and other sims. Uh, so I'm really tempted to jump on this because essentially for the price of buying the throttle, you get the stick for 100 bucks. That's an insane deal. Uh, earlier this week, it was as cheap as $369, I believe, so it's slowly climbing in price. And uh, one thing I'll say, and uh, the guys at Verpal and VKB have helped change this market by doing the a la carte system of selling a stick handle, a base, and then throttles all separately. And they make some pretty good stuff from what I understand. I have no first-hand experience with it yet. Haven't been able to get my hands on it. And they're really hard to get a hold of to uh, even order this stuff. It's sold out half the time or you got to get on long waiting lists. you got to pay crazy amounts of money for shipping. So as much as that stuff looks like it's, you know, the high end, um, one thing that can be said for Thrustmaster is they are usually always available. Uh, they do have the market share and uh, they make a good product. Some people will say that, you know, the base is junk, blah, blah, blah. You know, I've not had a problem with it. I've had Thrustmaster gear for years and always liked it. Um, and it doesn't cost as much as the VKB and the Verbal stuff. So there's that. Uh, but however, since they've created this new market where things are sold a la carte, Thrustmaster's starting to do that too. So I saw an ad the other day for the F-16 stick, which is the same goddamn stick you're looking at on that A-10 uh, Warthog stick. And they're selling the magnetic base, which is that same base that comes with the Warthog. So you could buy the stick alone for about $250, and yet, as you see on the page right here right now, they'll sell you the handle, the F-18 grip, for $229. So things are going to change real quick and if you guys have had your eye on getting any of the Thrustmaster stuff this is probably one of your best opportunities to get it because I have a feeling this kit is going to go away because if it doesn't it's going to make it a very hard sell for them to continue to sell that handle that base by itself you see where that's, this is going it just makes sense that they you know logically remove that skew before long or why would anybody buy them separately so something to consider. Uh, it's a great stick, and uh, from what I understand, the throttle is equally as awesome. I own the stick and a TWCS throttle with the T-Flight pedals and absolutely love it. And at $387, it's definitely worth considering, and it's probably not going to last too much longer. This went as high as like $560 or something over the holidays uh, when it goes back up. It, it usually sits at around $487, $88. Uh, in terms of the average, you know, MSRP for this thing on Amazon. So that's an incredible value. Definitely check it out. So I'm doing something a little bit different this week. In addition to the news for the week, I want to try to highlight something uh, I think is pretty cool every week uh, from the community in DCS or IL2 or Mech Warrior. You know, the, the, all the things that I play and get into uh, that I consider simulations and fun stuff. And uh, I happened across this uh, this morning, actually. And this is a video and uh, from a guy named L.A. West. And it's uh, DCS Cinematic Red Flag Athena International. Not sure what Athena International is. There's a link to it right down in the bottom underneath of the video. And apparently this video has something to do with Carrier Air Wing 8, which sounds like a squadron for DCS Online. And uh, I'll play a little bit of this for you. Challenger 8, Kilo Delta, safe parking. Uh -huh. Trying to get that. Point that night. Safe Kilo Delta, turn right, one angle, turn the ground, point six five.
these guys are good. This is pretty freaking badass. It's 3 minutes and 43 seconds long, and I highly recommend checking it out. I'm going to include a link in the uh, show notes underneath of the video here. Uh, definitely give these guys a, a shout out. Uh, it's very cool stuff. And again, I think I'm going to try to do more of this every week whenever I do news. Uh, try to include something that I found out there that I think is pretty cool and uh, shows off some of the great work that other people are doing in the community to help promote this hobby that we are very passionate about.